Welcome everyone to the Post Game Lobby. I'm joined by James Stress O'Leary, Martin Official, and of course Fevivin's mid laner. Fevivin's mid laner. Mid -laner. Strong start. It's been a long day, gentlemen, so let's just uh, jump right into it. H2K's mid laner, Febovin, thank you. You've been here all day. I have no excuses at this point, but I want to start by looking back on kind of some of the, the series we saw this week that were pretty unexpected, I think. And, and the first one, it feels like it has to be Fnatic versus Giants. This one was way more back and forth than I think we expected as a desk. And Officio, as the man casting it, I, I want to get some of your thoughts in summary. Um, very interesting, very funny, very fast paced. Uh, I definitely have to say, I don't think he's gonna win awards for like insane, crisp, clean gameplay. I do think game one for Fnatic though with the Kale was super cool and like really well executed. And I actually think game three as well. It seems like whenever they play like these like full on skirmish split push, the enemy team was, oh, in this case, Giants, didn't really know how to respond to it. Exactly, and I think when they're playing against a better team, if they yeah, get yeah, into yeah. playoffs, like I don't think this playstyle will work. But against teams like Giants, they kind of floundered, and it took like 40 minutes for Giants finally to win game two. <laughs> like, a lot of crazy stuff happened in this series. Overall, really crazy. See, Feb, been, uh, we're getting closer and closer to playoffs. Fnatic quite, haven't quite locked it yet. We'll hit on that more later. But is this Fnatic lineup a team that you're going to be nervous to play against? How, how are you feeling about their strength overall? Nah, not really. I, I think they're. They're fine right now. They have like good early game, and they have. I, I think that's it basically. Like they they know how to snowball, but then also they don't know how to close out games. And their play around Baron is pretty weak, and they just don't seem to be on the same page. And I think we're a better team for sure. Like even in scrims, we don't have like any trouble against them. And even when we're tanking go behind, we still still come back sometimes. So I don't think they can they can win against us. It feels like their play style is like, okay, can we get kills? Yes, okay, we win. Okay, we can't get kills. Let's try snowball uh, pushing in the side lane. If that doesn't work, they didn't really have too many options available after past yeah. that. It seems like they're very formulaic, right? I mean, we didn't see that much from them. Like, mm. we saw the split pushing in the game one and game two. And then this game, they just snowball, and you don't really see much either. Like, you just see people getting killed, and <laughs> it's not like yeah. it's you see, it's not like when you watch, you. you you don't see like a squad working together. I feel like like moving together. Like usually, Martin is alone. Um, Reckless is alone in the side lane pushing. Mm -hmm. You know, and it feels like they're doing their own thing and doesn't look that great as a team. Right the, now. Yeah, that was actually our story going into, especially the third game, where Reckless was just sitting on stage, mm -hmm. like he was just practicing, getting ready for the next game instead of you know, grooving mm -hmm. with the team, discussing the strategy or whatever. It was like. It was like, okay, now Caps wants to be the carry. Now Rex wants to be the carry. Now, okay, Bro Broxa, he wants to also be on the scrimmage. Like, each pick was like on its own, able mm -hmm. to create some sort of chaos and actually like force a fight or force like a 1v1. And then you don't win as, as five. I think you won as two or three. Because it was like a lot of <laughs> Source and Reckless together. Been like, hey, someone is coming to the side lane to take this wave. We're going to kill them. And they used that over and over. And Caps would like solo kill people. So a lot of individual performances, which obviously is not how you become the champions. But I think if you're Fnatic right now, you just want to make playoffs. Like, that is the only thing well, you care about. <laughs> let's then let's shift our attention over to another series that happened on Friday. Rockat versus Misfits. Ooh. We saw a lot more team play coming in there. Rockat, very clean games overall, and I think this was a huge surprise. Can you believe it? Rockat turning their season completely around with a win over the number two team in the group. Misfits have been looking so clean, apart from against teams like H2K and G2, so you would think they would be heavily favored against Rockat, but so clean was the games out of Rockat. Like, Faxi finally again showing up, but on different picks. Like, Gragas comes out for him. We saw a lot of solid play out of Rockat in game one, and Tificio, you you singing Game 2's praises all the way this week. Loved it. I think Game 2 was super <laughs> cool. Um, fun to see Kastan and Pack in the meta as well. Classic European pick. I don't even think it's that strong, especially because you need so much time before you actually become super useful. But I think they play super well as a team in the 1-3-1. And I'm happy when you see like a lot of progression, especially from a team that was down and out. Yeah. Like, they were basically down and out. Yeah. And then they came up back in after beating Origin. I just wonder, Febivin, did our bottom teams get better towards the end, or did our top teams slow down? I think the top teams just didn't improve that much, and the bottom teams like started playing full scaling comps. Mm -hmm. And uh, we know already that like besides G2, every team is really bad at closing out games. So everyone is playing for late game, and just I don't people throw and <laughs> I don't know, Misfits was really ahead like in yeah. game one. I only saw the solo kill mid, and then I didn't watch the game anymore. But I mean, you should get you should win after this, and I think 
they, I don't know, Misfit doesn't look that strong right now, I feel mm -hmm. like. Well, let's take a chance then to kind of look at the league as a whole. We are now approaching our, our final week of the regular split. We have a few teams locked into both playoffs and promotions. Bring up that graphic now to kind of take a look at how this is rolling down. Of course, G2 has locked first place seed. We're now two teams locked in the promotion tournament as well. You kind of brought up Misfits as a team that may be struggling. Do you expect to see any huge shifts in the standings in the coming weeks other than? Mm, no, I think Group 1, uh, Group A will be the same. Uh, Misfits second and then Fnatic or Rocket third. Uh, I don't know what is the problem with Misfits, but they just seem to be stuck with playing one style. Like I feel like they, they group a lot and they don't really know how to play on three lanes properly. At least when we play against them and we analyze them, they always look for the fights. They always look to group, like their top laner groups all the time, their mid laner. Mm -hmm. Uh, usually slow pushes waves instead of like uh, grouping. I mean, uh, instead of like pushing all the way and like dragging attention. So I think they're good as five, but they're just not playing well enough. Like, I don't know. They have looked super passive when they didn't mm. have a clear way to start a fight. Like exactly what he's mentioning, like when they're in trying to group with like a rumble comp, you would think, okay, now either you group around on uh, around like a dragon or baron they come in you use one bolt it's great you know or you use it to like maybe force people off a tower or something like that we don't really see it so i feel like ever since they played you guys in g2 it's been very very slow mm -hmm. um they used to be really good early game and get like these leads with especially sin again i keep saying it for cacao but like he's been forcing so many plays on it and they've not been able to do it uh, at all uh, funny enough also ever since afari started playing less tanks and he also he he went into a period where he played a lot of pure split push and it worked pretty well now he's playing like Rumble quite a bit and I don't think Misfits are playing too well with it. Well, let's take a look at the matches that are coming up on the table in the coming week to see what the strength of schedule looks like for Misfits because once again, one of their opponents coming up will be will be Fnatic, right? And we're gonna, mm -hmm. we're gonna see them in the final week, final match of the week could be a deciding match for that playoff seed, but these weaknesses, you guys, you guys are listing them off. Like we've seen them, like they're obvious to, to, to everyone who's watching. Do you think that Fnatic can exploit some of these weaknesses when it comes down to it? I think the, the fact that Rocket um, were able to handily take out Misfits means I think it's a lot less certain. I think oh, you sure. asked me last week, I say Misfits easily deals with Fnatic, easily deals with Giants, but I mean, I, I still think that way. They should be able to win. Key thing though, in Group A, Fnatic will lock in a playoff spot if they win versus G2 or Misfits. So Misfits kind of control that destiny as well. There's a lot going on in Group A in next week's games. Yeah, coming in very, very close on the game differential. O outside of this, this Misfits versus Fnatic, uh, are you guys feeling confident, uh, Fabian, coming in in your matchup against Splice for the coming week? Yeah, we have screamed them like, quite a bit, actually. Uh, I mean, screams doesn't mean much, but it, like if you win most of your games in scrims, it gives you a pretty good feeling. I mean, I mean like, we've been doing really good in scrims, but our closing out is still like bad. Like last week, uh, I don't know, just after after I am, we still have the same mistakes. Like we're trying to work on them, like closing out stuff. Uh, I feel like our early game is really strong, mm -hmm. but just translating it into a win without like getting too cocky or like, you know, it's still shaky, but I, I think we, Paulie will beat us up a bit for for this uh, for today. And, he told uh, us about that. Uh, I, I, he actually hits you. I, I hope he will do it because it will make me like I'm really aware of our mistakes and my my own mistakes. So if we fix this stuff, I think we will be good for playoffs and for next week. All right. Well, the standings are of course very close in Group B right now to find that first, second, third seed, depending how things unfold. But if you're watching us at the client, be sure to hit up the post game lobby at YouTube.com/lloesports as we discuss what could be in store as we head towards the Spring Split Finals in Hamburg. All right, so I'm actually not gonna quite talk about the beans. We're gonna pivot, we're gonna pivot a little bit because it's been a really interesting week and with two teams now locked in the promotion tournament, I wanna shift to that side. We can talk about the top in a little bit, but for now I wanna talk about the bottom because we have two teams locked in. It's Giants, it's Origin, and Misfits Academy. Now, now Strat, you, you bore witness to what we can safely call a, a colossal upset. So yeah. do, you, do you want to run us through that one? Uh, this was the biggest surprise. Everybody had pinned Schalke as walking their spot, not only into the promotion tournament, but through Origin into the LCS. And this is something that the, the Schalke FC side of, of Schalke as an organization will understand, I think, more than most esports organizations. If you don't show up in game on the day, you don't deserve the win. You can go 10-0 on the split, but if you don't 
win, the best of five that gets you there, you don't deserve it. And unfortunately, Schalke drafted greedily, played greedily, and could not compete with Misfits Academy, who had clearly prepared for this series. Did you know that the man to my left, Febivan, went to the promotion tournament twice, got 3 0 both times after being considered the strongest challenger team uh -huh. by many. <laughs> And he had to get into LCS by being picked up by Fnatic instead. Wow. No, actually, no, you made it in with the expansion tournament. Yes, 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 yes. he made it in, he made it in. You deserve it. You were in there. All right, give us your thoughts, Febben, as apparently you've been here multiple times. What's it like playing the promotion tournament? How do you feel like it compares coming in from Challenger to LCS? Okay, so when we were like Cloudline Eclipse, uh, we were all like, I mean, for myself at least, I was like 18 years old, you know, most cocky kid, like, I was ever been in my career and I was so confident that he would win, you know, and even the whole team was like, oh, we're just going to beat this guy out, oh, this guy is so bad, you know, and then when we played, they were like playing full solo queue and they were actually so much better as a team, like against, who was it again? It was against Young, Buck, Young Buck's team. Oh, it was Wolves, wasn't Coming it? Yeah, Wolves. Uh, yeah, Wolves, yeah, yeah those think. Ari games. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. I'm not trying to make No, I mean, I don't mind. <laughs> it's fine, but yeah, I mean, just get, getting into LCS is so much better, like, you just grow so much as a player, and also from those from those losses, like in Challenger, it's it has to happen, and you can't be cocky like we were. And I think that was the biggest problem for me, at least. From playing a promotion tournament myself, a few times <laughs> oh my God, in we're my going great career, uh, you know, <laughs> where I was down there visiting uh, a few times, the feeling you have when you sit on stage and you're playing for a job is like it's such a different feeling. Like it's not even you're not nervous specifically. You're just kind of like. <laughs> You can't really find the right mindset. And then when you lose the first game, especially, it just sucks because you're like, damn it, we worked so hard to get here and now we're going to get you know, kicked out. And it's, just, it's awful, man. So I can just imagine Schalke in game one coming in. We saw the tweets, you know, they were, they were happy, mm. they were ready, they were, they were trash talking and everything. And I respect that part. Yeah. That's fine to do before the game. But then when you lose game one, you're just like, damn. We're actually playing like solo queue, they're playing like a team, this is not good, and it just went downhill. You speak about the nerves, like a player that just didn't see him phase. First time we've seen him on stage, Pride Stalker comes out and demolishes Lulex Dutch in player. two games. <laughs> huh? Dutch talent. <laughs> the, the, Rengar the, one trick. The, well, he played yes. Rengar and he played Kha'Zix, and like, this is the first time this young player stepped on stage, and he just goes, okay, I'll just, I'll just like, go 8 no on Kha'Zix in a game. And like, Lulex just looked lost, this is a guy that's like been to Worlds, this is a guy that yeah. just crushed yeah. everybody in Challenger and it just did not line up for him. I feel so bad. I mean, literally Twitter for, for hours yeah. after that series, reaching, 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 one hell of a series coming tomorrow. Yep. Fnatic Academy versus PSG. Yellow Star, the old guard of Fnatic versus Fnatic the Academy. Old <laughs> Everything. Wow, this is like you couldn't have uh, written this. Also, PSG. I feel like the big thing we have to remember here is they don't have Schalke, the Tenno mm -hmm. team. I don't feel like either of these teams is gonna be cocky coming into this series, right? Both these guys kind of struggled when it, all the teams outside of Schalke felt like they kind of struggled into the playoffs, right? It was a very right. close playoff race. Tripped into series. the playoffs. Well, tripped. I feel like there was some effort there, Martin. I don't oh, think anyone sure. tripped into the playoffs. I feel, I feel like Schalke like really expected to win and then Misfits were like, oh, we're not expecting anything. We're just gonna maybe get 3-0. <laughs> we're gonna win or we're gonna lose, you know? Like, I don't think they, they they had that much expectations and then Schalke was like, yeah, we're really gonna win and maybe it hit them like after the first game. I'm not sure, but it can happen and I think it will, might have been the case. I think the interesting thing is PSG are on the upswing after losing to Schalke and Fnatic Academy when Fnatic Academy had Broxa in week one. PSG have gone back to back. Five out of the last six games have been wins for them. White Knight? Yeah, White Knight came in. <laughs> instantly created noise for PSG. Fnatic Academy have been playing musical chairs. Finally, they've got Kikis, amazing. Uh, you know, they've got Rales, Niski, and, and Kly. And like that lineup has been very solid when we've seen it as one unit, but it's only been in the last two weeks that Amazing has come into the lineup. So there's so much on the line. And both of these lineups, I think you could argue a case for how I they just, should win this easily. I feel like we never know. 
Yeah. Every, oh, challenger, no, every challenger playoffs were like, this team's the best. They're going to crush everybody. And sometimes it happens. People said it last bit about misfits. misfits. And they struggled. They're like, they're destroy they everyone. They struggled. Like, no, 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 they barely no. made it in. Millennium, the split before, same happened. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. It, they, they, that, it crashed slightly before, though. Yeah. But still, <laughs> like, it went downhill pretty fast. I guess we have to go back to Origin when they were challenger team. I was like, okay, these guys. No, actually, they auto qualified. Yeah. Because back in the day, you didn't have to play promotion <laughs> tournaments. They didn't even need to play it. Yeah. All right. Well, of course, you can find that matchup tomorrow at uh, 4 p.m. Central European summertime as we go through our own little daylight savings. Is it still called daylight no. savings well, here? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. We're shifting. I've heard, I've been informed that the clocks are shifting for some reason. I don't Next understand week, how yes. it works. <laughs> Got it. An hour forward. Out. 4 p.m. tomorrow Backward. in Berlin time. You can translate that yourself depending on where you're living. But now I want to look. Something a little bit closer. LCS, we've seen a lot of, uh, I mean, it's, it's post game like, we've seen a lot of weird shit this week. Let's be honest. Whoa! Whoa. Cassidy, I'm, Damn. I'm, letting, I'm letting loose. We've seen, we've seen the Cassidy, we've seen a Blitzcrank, I saw a Kale today, a Swain top. Is this 7.5 or are people just having fun, experimenting? Why are we seeing so many odd picks? Fevbin, I want to go to you. you. You obviously are scrimming a ton as a team. W what's the deal? Why are there so many oddball picks coming out? Mm, I mean, every patch, like, champs get nerfed and you just try stuff out, like, I think right now it's, there's, a, there's, the game is kind of getting balanced a bit, like, there's still OP champs, but I think that also, like, ha just having surprising picks can really help you to get those wins if you really need them, like, for example, Fnatic there, they really need to win and they, I think, picking a Kale or something, or, like, even for our series today, Vitality, they, pick the trash, I mean, it's kind of normal, but then the trash gets banned and they instantly go to Blitzcrank. So <laughs> it shows that they really want to hook people and kill them and then just try to snowball, you know? And I think for some people, for some teams right now, it's just needed to have those picks. Like even the Swain top, I think it's fine against Camila. I don't yeah. know how it works, right. but yeah, I mean, if you can get a random solo kill or something, it can really snowball. Yeah, and, and that's the kind of play style that, that is, you're talking about is allowed with there being less like S tier OP picks. Mm -hmm. You can pick a containing matchup like Swain into Camille. We saw it a couple of weeks back in Challenger. Like we were talking earlier on the desk about the Kale pushes in the Vladimir. I'm glad to see that there is room for picks that have very specific niches in response to a pick that you're not just like, oh, they've locked Syndra, great, we lost the lane. Like, that's everything done. I I'm glad there is room yeah. for that. I mean, it seems to be the balance uh, idea from the, the right team in, in Central, obviously, with like, instead of buffing a lot of things, you'd nerf what is super strong, because then you hope to have like an open field where, you take a Vladimir, he's a strong pick, he's a good pick. He's not an, like, oh my God, we have to ban him every game. You got, there's a lot of picks you can play against him. He has weaknesses in the early game with a, like a wave and so on that you can, you know, pick things like Kale around. That's what Cap said. He was like, mm. maybe I can survive lane in this matchup and get two items and then I'm going to win the game. So in that sense, it opens up for a lot of viable picks. There's always the problem where a lot of pro players are afraid of trying certain things, you know, or maybe they need to have some success in solo queue before they bring it into scrim. But the fact that it is a possibility is good. Also because Vitality didn't really play for a whole lot, so there was no pressure. Mm -hmm. They could go for Blitzcrank if they wanted to. If they lost, people, no one would blame them. They'd be like, yeah, you lost to HK, happens. To be fair, they also found a win against HK. It was very close, it was uncomfortably Almost close. Almost lost the last game. <laughs> yeah, definitely uh, a little close for comfort there for all the H2K fans. Now, something we've kind of been talking about behind the scenes all day today is blue side versus red side. And I want to touch on this a little bit because 7576, they're very similar patches from talking to teams. Doesn't seem like there's a ton of changes. So looking at this coming into playoffs, are, are, do you feel like blue side or red side is going to be stronger in pick spans? Because we've seen it go back and forth and it's been very polarizing, it feels like. There's a lot of uh, shifts because mm -hmm. the first few weeks, almost every team picked blue side whenever yeah. they could. Because mm -hmm. it was like you had to ban Camille, Rengar, LeBlanc on red side. That was it. There was no other bans. Then in the middle of the split, there were a few nerfs and people were starting to leave some of the OPs open and force the blue side to ban away some of the OPs and you could then suddenly get more power on red side and we saw more teams pick red side. But I saw Unicorns a lot very early, give like Rengar and then mm -hmm. pick the Iron against it. Um, so that, is, that shifted definitely. I feel like now when you don't have to ban uh, like things like Camille, Rengar, LeBlanc anymore, it gives a lot of power to red side because you have last pick in the last phase, you have first pick in the last phase, you have first ban in the last phase. Like you have a lot of options right there to dictate the draft, which is really strong, but I can definitely see merit in both sides. So I'm curious, Fabian, you, you've obviously just played today. Uh, what was your feeling on, on the draft? Do you feel like you had more control coming in on the red side? Would you prefer to be on blue side more frequently? What, what are your impressions from, from today's games and of course across the split as well? 
I think for me, like personally, for me, it's like really hard to to blind pick a champ on blue side because I mean today they met Oriana, so I cannot like blind pick Oriana, which is like the strongest mid. So I fall back to Cinder obviously, but there's always count like one, two, three champs against against Cindra and. I don't know, it's just not much you can do. Like, you can ban the, the best champs against it, but then there's something else they can pick. And I think just re having red side is so good because if you have a, if you have like a good top laner, a good mid laner, it will place a lot of champs. There's always a good red side situational pick, which you can't really ban because you have, I mean, you have five bans, it's a lot, but mm -hmm. it's still not enough. Like, yeah. Yeah, just the pool was way too mm -hmm. far open. To yeah, I, I, I desperately was, was trying to come up and, and build a solid argument about why I was against some of the statistics that came out this week about the first week of play on 7.5, where it was a 61% win rate for blue side and then it fell to 44. I, I've kind of finalized where, where I stand on it. Like a lot of teams on blue side in the, in the first week were drafting blind pickable like 80 carries like Ezreal and then a mid laner like Oriana, which is blind pickable, but doesn't win a whole lot of matchups and gives a lot of pace over to the opponents. So when you end up getting a last pick for one winning matchup, and if you can win another lane, like this Ezreal, this Oriana need a lot of time. And that's what we saw a lot of teams do on blue side. I don't think it, it's inherently gonna stay that way. When we've had another week of play now, we've seen these funny counters coming in for a lot of the champions and a lot of pacing come back over. But I, I certainly think that like drafting priorities, that's what messed up Schalke in their series on 7.5. They weren't prepared to pick winning lanes somehow on blue side. And it's very difficult with the pacing that red side gets, getting that first pick in phase two. Well, uh, yeah. I kind of want to, the thing I want to touch on here is that we talk about wave pressure so much uh, over the course of the split, how crucial it is to kind of have pushing lanes to set yourself up for success in the early game. Uh, when is it okay to take picks like Ezreal that maybe aren't always going to just have the push guaranteed? Like, when can you pick an Oriana who isn't always going to win lane? When can you pick essentially, when can you sack a lane in the early game, right, to, to ensure late game dominance or mid game dominance? Mm -hmm. Well, I think you can pick only, like, you can pick. For example, for mid, I don't think it's really good to pick like a losing matchup because it means a lot to the game, it means that the enemy can always push and, and move with the jungler and also creates pressure for the side lanes. So I know for, for Ezreal, I'm not really a big fan of Ezreal, but if you have already a strong jungler, strong mid, which can relate pressure to the to that lane, then it's good. And mm -hmm. when you can eventually like put Ezreal mid and you can always wave clear. But like uh, I think Oriana right now is doesn't really have counter, so it's always good to blind pick. She has like, I don't know, maybe Victor is fine against, uh, mm. against uh, Oriana, but still Oriana has the, has the push and the gank setup. So I think once those bind pickable champs get uh, banned away by red side, there's a lot more counter picks open and it makes the draft hard and the, the game as well. Always has to be a trade-off. Yeah. It becomes yeah. like, oh, we sack in one lane, well then you need to win in another yeah. lane somewhere. You kind of have like I don't remember the last time I've seen a European team lose or win a game with three losing lanes. Like it almost never happens. I've saw SKT do it against KT, where KT decides to run headfirst into a wall. <laughs> we've for we've like had one or two games with two but, losing lanes. We saw. Yeah. I mean, we saw you guys fall prey to the, the Victor Ezreal mid game coming in from Unicorns Love once on the side of H2K. Oh but yeah. I, I mean, they should have lost. Yeah, but it's fine. <laughs> you say it's fine, but you don't look like it's fine. No, it was not fine. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, let's take one more chance to look at the, the final week coming up of the regular split. This is a reminder that we're going to have four days of EU LCS coming your way. We've taken a look at the schedule once before. We'll look at it again. Uh, some pretty big matchups coming up. We already talked about Splice versus H2K. Are you nervous at all about your matchup versus OG? Feldman? Very. Very. You just shook your head. They can't see it, but I'm putting you on blast. You shook your head and said, What's the worst question ever? <laughs> <laughs> it's in the I mean, you're expecting that whole answer anyway. All right, well, uh, kind of just as a final closeout <laughs> moments. Um, excited most mad matches you're most excited for in the coming week, gentlemen? Uh, Fnatic G2. Fnatic G2? Fnatic Misfits. Ooh. For me. There's only two Fnatic games, Stretch. You're going to have to pick a different I'm one. I'm not picking a Fnatic game. <laughs> I can't believe I'm going to say this. Rocket G2 is legitimately intriguing. Because if Rocket can win one game, it might actually get them playoffs. Yeah, like that series, like if you're watching in the future and like Rocket have tanked, like there was a time where we felt like Rocket on a five series winning streak potentially could take a game. I don't think they take the series, but. All right, well, well thank you all very much for joining me. Uh, if you're watching us in the future, <laughs> 
I don't know what to say to that. If you're watching us in the present, though, we'll have four games, or four days of games coming up next week, but it's time for us to log out for the night. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll be back on Thursday at 5 p.m. Central European Summertime as the EU LC at Spring Flat comes to its dramatic conclusion. Have a wonderful Saturday evening. Without using your brain, and remember yesterday, you were like uh, doing analysis, and you're like, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> 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 he's got pushing up, he's got a little bit low. They're just going to be forward, and he hits it. First blood on the unleashed power. I have warrior now. I'm really, really OP. I'm really strong. Like okay, he's really strong. Man, Ooh. Joko, he was going fast right now, putting on those running shoes. But the question is, does he live through this? Because oh. Joko's way too low. Kabushar, he's got no scarl, and Yankos cleans up in the top lane. A double kill for Yankos. He's looking to make it three, maybe four, maybe five. He hops in for one more. That's a double kill for Nuclear, however, and that's gonna be the ace. And he says that's the bottom line because H2K said so. That's the next son. 36 and a half minutes in. Man, what a show we got. Everyone doesn't know the Cabo Oh here. no, it's the Swain Crow Storm! For a kill. Shani trying to live, but he goes down. Cabo Shark goes golden, and he goes right back in to try and clean up this fight. Feminine gets a big shutdown, but he's taken down himself as Che flashes away. It is a two for three, but Baron secured by Vitality. Great game out of Vitality. Excellent. They roll the snowball all the way to the finish line, and who'd have thunk it stressed? We got a game three as Vitality tie up the series. Oh, Joko's still following, looking for another. That should be it. Level six to level eight. Don't oh, even no. matter, and oh. no stun. Joko, oh. no, no, he overstays. Honestly, been able to get a little bit more done on the Zyra pickup. Oh, there's an equalizer on defense. Oh, this is Jay. Let's see what they can get done here. Joko, they get a big shutdown. It's final take of damage from Cabo Shard. Pulling Yankos, and Jay was burning down, and Yankos is going to fall. H2K getting caught with their pants down. Joko managing to get people out of there, and that is going to be Odo going for the new charge on Nuke Duck. There's a big red carpet in the back, but H2K walk right over it. Looking for a Shani, looking for steel back. Nuclear on a rampage. A double kill for him. Vitality melting. Dragon's Rage kick as we go into base race vision here. Joko cannot do this alone. He has to settle for a ZZ Rod portal, and he has to settle for a loss as H2K. It looks grim, it looks dire, but they come back and close out the series. The Maokai. Okay, how oh, tanky is Flexish? Not very tanky. Not very tanky at all. Flashes over the wall, eats the culling, and runs into Jezus. It's reckless that secures the kill. So as forced to defend. Yeah, but look at the Nexus! Nexus is on the Nexus! He's under pressure! Caps, he's taken down both! There's a teleport from So as! Oh my god! Fanatic! They win game number one with the back! Someone's gonna get hooked. Someone's gonna get hooked. Trench right onto EQ. An instant flash away. Flash forward. The depth charge knocks EQ up in the air. Exhaust buys a few seconds, but not enough. So is this locked up from the team. He gets taunted up. I see Chad Kali got to hit him. He's He's pulling off the hero play. Obliterates EQ. Now for now to continue the push. This is the fight they were looking for. Spirit's Refuge buys some time, but not enough. Flaxish goes down. Memento, they could try the combo. Throws out the cues. 5,500 going in. It's stolen! Giants get the Baron! The Reckless gets out alive! Reckless is going low! Mev Reckless is going low to The Nexus Reckless had no minions! Have Giants turned it around? Giants force a decided game three! Hey, looking! Pretty good so far. Cool, calm, and collected caps. Look, whoa! Bang. The crowd erupts in fanatic chants as the last Nexus turret goes down. A taunt on tonight. The only member alive for a few seconds longer is HeQ. He's being dove underneath the fountain. Caps decides not to chase. The ace, the base, fanatic are one step closer to the playoffs.